Hey everyone, just a little disclaimer for poop month. If it wasn't already clear, we will be discussing poops and farts in depth throughout this month. So you have been warned. Also throughout this month, we will be referring to poop as stool or feces. These terms will be used interchangeably. It basically means the same thing. Oh, and one last disclaimer pertaining to mildly explicit language. We will also be calling it shit. Thank you. Hey, we are the Lab Doctors. I'm Amanda. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Zhao Yong. We are biomedical researchers who realize we still have a lot to learn about science. So why not join us on this quest? Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. So on this Today in Science episode, we're going to talk about our poop experiences. So in... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny because it's like our toilet poop experiences. I mean, I guess experiences with gastrointestinal shit. <laughs> I thought it was like medical experiences. Oh, wasn't that it poop? Poop. poop. Oh, Just related. everything. Poop related. Okay, poop okay. related <laughs> medical experiences. <laughs> Just need a bit more scientific, <laughs> intelligent sounding. <laughs> mm, okay, so anyway, if, in case you missed it, today in science episodes are the one where we talk about anything to do with science, which is basically everything, because everything has science, because we're nuts. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So actually, we're going to start off with Zhao Yong. And if you realise, he did all the research for the Poop Month extravaganza questionnaire. And... Yeah. Okay, so actually the reason why was he recently had a gastrointestinal experience, which he's going to tell us about. So maybe you want to start off with how it started. What symptoms do you feel? Uh, actually, I don't know how long I've kind of felt it. I feel like my poops haven't been exactly entirely regular for I don't know, a couple of months. So it's like there were bouts of constipation followed by diarrhea, but you know, it's not the full on watery diarrhea, uh-huh. not the Jackson Pollock, it's the whatever the other one is, soft serve. Yeah. Soft serve. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. So it, it just fluctuates recall. between them. It's like the ami- amoeba sometimes, soft serve sometimes. Oh, that's but then, so bad. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. so initially I adjusted by like eating, changing my diet. So I thought it was because my diet was kind of shitty. Uh-huh. Uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but after a while then, I had this feeling that constantly felt like I haven't emptied my bowels. So Even clin- after? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even after pooping. pooping. So oh. the clinical term is tenesmus. T-E-N-E-S-M-U-S, yep. I think. Yeah, but it just means like you feel like there's still stuff. Uh. There's still poop up your butt. So uh. <laughs> even though you've... Even Cooked though you have all you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, of course, I, I googled my symptoms like an idiot. And then, <laughs> like, so a whole bunch of stuff came out and it's like, oh, it could be like Stop colorectal panic. cancer. Colorectal blah, cancer. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then also because I have a bit of family history of colorectal cancer, so I was a bit more worried. Mm-hmm. So I, I decided to just go check it out. Mm. And then, um yeah, and then... So where did you go? You went to a... GP, like general practitioner, or you went to a specialist? Uh, so because, you know, Singapore's healthcare system, to get all the subsidies, you have to go through referrals. <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. I went to a polyclinic first, and then they referred me to the hospital okay. after that. So polyclinic yeah. would just be your regular neighborhood doctor? Similar, kind of. yeah, yeah, similar to a GP. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so then uh, they recommended to do a colonoscopy just to, you know, make sure that there's nothing. And also because colonoscopies can be very thorough. So um, they can get samples of not only your colon, I think they can get samples of your colon, mm. not too sure. But they can also remove any polyps, which are small yeah. tumorous growths. Then it's not necessarily cancerous, yeah. but um, it can become cancerous. So they can remove that during a colonoscopy also. So it's just a very comprehensive you know, diagnostic slash surgery. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so they just suggested for me to go for that and I went for okay, colonoscopy. Okay, so f- for our yeah. listeners, what is a colonoscopy and what does it entail? Right, right, right. So Let's hear your experience. <laughs> I <feel authority. laughs> no, 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 it's great. Like, okay. that's, I want to know if yours went through the anus or like through your mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are, there are two different type okay. of scopes. So both are considered endoscopes. So endo meaning like inside, right? Uh, and scope meaning? And, yeah, like sight, is it? Sight? Seeing? Oh, scope. Uh, yeah. yeah, scope. So, S I G H T. Seeing. Yeah. But uh, colonoscopy is just the more specific one which goes from your anus into your colon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then the thing that we call endoscopy is the one that goes through your mouth. Oh, yes. yeah. there's a difference? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's... Okay, so oh, what John okay. is right, is both called endoscopy. I mean, in technical terms, that, it's yeah. both endoscopy, but colloquially or not, like in medical, in the medical field, uh-huh. when you say endoscopy, it generally refers to the one where you stick Put the camera the, down your mouth. Yeah. Into your... 
yeah. esophagus. And colonoscopy is the one that's up your butt. So colonoscopy is the more specific term. I would say it's more specific. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And it's, again, we're not medical professionals. So <laughs> this is just us. our... Ex- oh, yes. Disclaimer, this is just our experience with... Yes, yes, yes. yes with, with gastrointestinal with, conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So we are not, you know, claiming that we can diagnose. We definitely don't take that claim. Legally, we don't... We are not <laughs> able... <laughs> we are just the lab. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, yeah. so just our personal experiences. Okay, so does it hurt? I can't remember. But, okay. So, it won't you under uh-huh. anesthesia. Yeah. Yes, it's all right. <laughs> Was my living condition. anesthesia. Yes, yes, yes. That's so, why you wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they do give you like a, a light general anesthesia. So it's not the kind that knocks you out for like an entire day. I was pretty sure within 20, 30 minutes after the procedure, I was already awake. And then, you know, it's a day surgery. So I could just go home immediately after that. Uh, barring any complications. Yeah. So, um, so you didn't feel any pain during, I mean, you were knocked after? out during, but what? I mean... <laughs> Not to scare people. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, during the colonoscopy, when I think when they were removing the polyp, I definitely felt like a very sharp pain and I was awoken up a bit and ah. I could see the screen and then the screen and I was looking at my own colon a bit and I was like, holy crap, that was... Uh, holy, holy crap. crap. <laughs> 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 it was, it's, the pain was quite sharp and, and quite obvious to me, but after that, I was knocked out again. So... so- how many did they remove? Like a lot? No, no, no. So it was just one. What does it look like? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. So they would give you a summary of your scope. Yeah. yeah. And they would show you like the different, in, as in, so it's just still frames of the different parts of uh, my colon. Mm-hmm. And then Which in particular- she sent to us in the group chat, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you see her anyway. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> really? <laughs> he sent it on the day of his colonoscopy. He must have just closed the chat. <laughs> yeah, so, I'll switch it later. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there was one polyp and then they removed it. So they removed it and then sent it to diagnosis. I don't know, biopsy. It's yeah. a biopsy, right? Maybe, mm. yeah. Sampling. I can't remember the actual term. See, we're not doctors. So, <laughs> um, I Basically mean, to check whether the polyp cancerous. is cancerous or be dying. Yeah, 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 exactly. So then after that, it was just a follow-up to tell me whether or not it was cancerous and it wasn't, thankfully. So, But for me, because they detected a polyp, that means that uh, chances are I can I'm at a higher risk of developing polyps and that yeah. means that I probably need to do a scope once every five years from now onwards oh, just to be sure actually I'm quite yeah. surprised that they would encourage you to do it or like they agreed that you should do a scope because I thought in general if you're still quite young your risk for colorectal cancer is quite low so they wouldn't yes, yes. encourage you because it's so you have to fast you have to clear your bowels before oh that was the worst part honestly the entire surgery was completely chill like mm. everyone's very professional. Everyone was very like, they explain. If you ask questions, they explain. So I ask questions and they explain. <laughs> I don't know if they would, would have explained. I don't know. I feel like sometimes they wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, the entire surgery was very smooth. It was it was okay. It wasn't very daunting. It wasn't very scary. Uh. Um, the annoying part was the clearing of the bowels. Yeah. Mm. You uh, cannot like eat a lot of things. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. So three days before that, you can't eat any fibrous stuff. So if you are vegetarian or oh my gosh, vegan, what do they I eat then? Eat bread, only bread. Like oh, yeah, bread yeah, yeah, or like bread. rice. That's it. Carbs. <laughs> yeah. You can still eat meat though, but you know because vegans and vegetarians don't eat meat, so. Oh. Um, yeah, but you can't eat vegetables. And then on the day itself, you have to drink this disgusting solution that makes you purge your bowels. Mm. So do you pee through your butt? Essentially, yes. Oh my it god, because like it's empty through. already. Yeah, yeah, and it was it's warm. It's a warm liquid. It's like, <laughs> it's like went through your colon, right? So it's warm. <laughs> so it's, the feeling is just not great. Um, I felt so clean after that though because it's, it's I mean, like, I think I would too. It's like empty. Yeah. Um. Uh, but that's the worst part. The the drink just didn't taste good. They say you can... Oh, so the, the worst part was that they, when they were giving me the stuff, they didn't tell me, oh, if it tastes bad, you can add a bit of like lemon uh, or a bit of honey uh, into it. When you drink is right before the thing? On the day itself. So a few hours before you uh, had to finish the course. Uh, so it was like four packets and each packet is like mixed with one liter of water. <gasps> yeah. So, so I had so to gosh. drink four liters of water in four hours. Whoa. Isn't that bad? Uh, like so our drinking, so ep- there was one episode yeah, on yeah, how yeah, much yeah. water toxicity. So they tell you to specifically don't try not to drink it all at one go. If it's difficult, like try 250 mils every 15 minutes. 
Mm. Yeah, but because it was so shitty, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I drank it all in half an hour. I had to get rid of it. It was just, no, it's not fun. What did it, what it taste like? Metal or? It tastes like coconut. Wait, it should be fine yeah. to most people. It's like coconut plus, I don't know what it is, like sports drink. It's not really sports drink also. Gatorade. It's just, it's just weird. It's just, <laughs> nah, it's just not nice. Uh-huh. Okay, you don't so... need to drink it, you don't. Uh, okay, so a colonoscopy is not just to diagnose colorectal cancer, right? Because no, if no, no. Yeah. I remember correctly, your initial self-diagnosis was IBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, they can also, bowel syndrome. Yes. So they can also determine if there was inflammation in your colon by, I think, observation. Again, we are not doctors. I'm not too sure mm. about it. But so from my post-surgery, no, not post-surgery, but like the follow-up after that, the doctor told me that yeah, the polyp was non-cancerous, which was great. And then they didn't detect any inflammation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, most likely it isn't like it isn't inflammation of the colon that yeah. is giving me gastrointestinal issues. So um all good news, but you know, I'm still experiencing some symptoms. So I'm like, mm, what, what exactly is going on? So then they they were telling me it might be upper. So chances are I might need to do another endoscopy. Oh from the mouth. The mouth. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully I don't need to purge anything. It's just don't need to eat. But I, I yeah, don't usually know. it's just we'll fast, I think, on the day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, so honestly, the entire process, the, the stressful part was whether or not I had cancer. Mm. And even after they found the polyp and it was just one, and because, you know, I have a background in science, so I'm like, oh, okay, if it's just one and it's not too big, chances are it's not anything. But um, why I need to do a colonoscopy once every five years from now onwards is because generally that's the amount of time it takes for polyps to form. Mm. And um, before it also can become cancerous. So... Mm. You know, if I follow up with that and do my colonoscopy once every five years, chances are it doesn't really affect me all that much. Yep. So it's quite chill. Cool. It's quite fun. Besides the pooping everything out, peeing through mm. my butt. You know, that, that wasn't fun. Yeah. So what now then? So um, just Besides waiting. waiting for the endoscopy, yeah. I guess. Did you change anything else in, with your diet? Yeah, so... I don't know if I have gluten intolerance or celiac disease. I don't Isn't it like happening. super serious? If it's quite, it? yeah. I don't but, think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the symptoms are actually quite debilitating. So I don't really know if I actually have that. Or it maybe could be I a just gluten have, sensitive. Yeah, sensitive. Sen- yeah, yeah, yeah. So not celiac. Because celiac is the worst yeah, form. Yeah. Um. So just trying to watch what I eat and seeing what I react to poorly. Mm. And then cutting that out of my diet so yeah so actually this is a good tip I mean not that we're giving medical advice but you should definitely be more watchful of your diet what you eat and how you feel after you eat it Mm, mm. because at the end of the day you know your body best yep so if you can observe all these things at least you can go talk to a doctor about it then that would be helpful because if you just go to the doctor and say my tummy hurts it's very hard to diagnose yeah, what it's it is. So vague. Yeah, so Yeah. So it's the whole monitor your symptoms like poop. Honestly, <laughs> so, honestly. And don't ignore your body. So yeah. like initially, I was kind of ignoring my body because again, it's like like what Dorothy said, oh, you're young. Yeah. You know, chances are it's not colorectal cancer. But who knows, you know, if mm. I didn't go for the scope and I didn't find the polyp, maybe in five years time, it, w- it would have become cancerous or yeah, something. Yeah, you never mm. know. Yeah. Better to be safe than but sorry. for now, are your symptoms better or are they still... They're more manageable at, at the very least. So it's not to the extent where I'm worried that I have cancer, but mm. yeah, like at least I can deal with it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can actually do oh, something about it. Another thing is stress, right? That yeah, was one yeah. of the triggers that we were talking about. Because really? actually stress can can Shoes? cause IBS. Yeah, it uh, can yeah. trigger gluten yeah. allergies to appear. So, so there was weird. no diagnosis eventually. It's just you're, you're fine. From the colonoscopy, no. Because yeah, they said my colon is healthy mm. other than that one polyp. Yeah, that's 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 what sometimes... I want, It's very bad to say that's annoying. Mm-hmm. But like sometimes you just go to the doctor and, and you just don't know what's the cause of it. Yeah. And mm. they do yeah. so many things. And then like, like that's what happened to me as well. Mm. Sure, I can talk about it later. Sure. Yeah. Like Actually, now? you can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dorothy, your turn. Yes, yeah, so I had the same experience where I went to the doctor for this issue and, and I still don't know what happened to it. But mm-hmm. basically, every few months or sometimes it could be just one month apart, I would have like, I had this severe stomach ache and it would be in the middle of the night and I would have to go to the toilet and I would sit there for like mm. half to one hour, I'm not sure, in the middle of the night and I'll be breaking out in cold sweat. 
and I'll be like... Mm. And Sounds like I, IBS, actually. I don't know, because... Uh-huh. What? I, I don't know the symptoms of IBS. <laughs> no, no, no. As in, so... um usually for IBS, you don't really get restful sleep and then you do get like, in the middle of the night, you get constipation, abdominal pains, cramps that seemingly like come out of nowhere. Yeah, but it's like spaced out. It's like, it started, I remember when I was holiday holidaying in end 2018. Okay. And then after that, like a few months later, it's random and then all the way until like 2019 and then 2020 hit. But like, yeah, then it suddenly disappeared. Oh. So, I also don't, oh, maybe it's stress. Uh, maybe it's stress related. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. not stress anymore. So I went to the doctor because I'm like, what's wrong with this? And then it's so uncomfortable because you're sitting on the toilet bowl. But nothing is happening. And then your legs just go numb, but you mm-hmm. can't get out because yes. you're just in pain. And then yep. I'm like, what if I faint at night and no one's there? So it's a bit scary. Yeah, yeah, the toilet bowl or yeah. something. Yeah. It's oh quite goodness, dangerous. That's very scary. Yeah. And because yeah. you, you also like a bit want to puke. Cause yes, yes. Yeah. And then, and then like, people ask me, is it the food you eat? I'm like, no, this, like today the food I ate was every the thing that I really like to eat like every other week. So it's fine, that kind of thing. Mm. And so you totally don't know what's the cause of it. So I went to like a, the general practitioner in the polyclinic and they just took my blood. And then after that, they tell me, oh, you are iron deficient. Mm. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, no, no, not iron deficient. Your blood is, uh, you're anemic. Yes, right, right. anemic. So yeah. just take some iron tablets. That's the first thing you would do. Oh yeah, that's what I read also for, for these for, kind of symptoms. Yeah, if you have low blood. Anemia, yeah. So uh, took some iron, tab- iron tablets, your, your shit becomes red or black. Yes, yes, I mean, yes. Not red, black. but dark red, right? black, yeah, yeah, blackish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then a few weeks later, it's like, oh, uh, you take the blood test again. And then it's like, uh, not much improvement. Maybe just a little bit, like your blood levels go up a bit, but I feel like it's just variation. <laughs> And after that, I'm like, so what now? Like, is this the cause? What's causing my stomach ache? Yes. And then they just send me the specialist. And then the specialist, you have to wait so long for the yeah. specialist or so in Singapore. And then after that, they just show you the the, the poop chart that we're talking about. Yes, the Bristol chart. What does your poop look like? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, then, and then I can't really remember what happened. But at the end of the day, my point is, I still didn't know why. <laughs> What caused whatever I had? Yeah. And I think that's like the frustrating thing. That's about the frustrating it. thing. Because it's very normal for a lot of people. Yeah, because you know that there's something wrong, because yeah. you feel it every day, but they just can't find it. I mean, yeah. it's not anyone's fault. It's not it's just, really, it's not. Yeah. I mean, the doctors, they, they can save lives, but they're yeah. not they're not caught, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they can, they do their best to their, their abilities. So yeah. it's not to blame. It just sometimes sucks to be you, I guess. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very thankful for my <laughs> gut and gastrointestinal system, I well, guess. Don't speak too soon, Amanda. Oh my don't speak too soon. No, it's touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. But I just know that I, I after that, they, they asked me to go for a more in more thorough blood test. Mm-hmm. And then they just diagnosed me with some other blood condition that I'm genetically born with, which I never found out until now. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they discharged me. And I'm like... like oh, the system, and then you're, like, you're fine. Yeah, and then you know, sometimes you <laughs> oh, go into the... the, the doc- you, you go Before you go to the doctor, you plan what questions you want to ask. Yes. And then after you come out of the room, and you're like, oh, I never asked this question. So the question I did not ask was, okay, you diagnosed with me, me with this. Then what What caused my son? Yes. <laughs> And then I just live on without knowing the answer until today. And then and then somehow it's like, oh, no more already. No more stomach ache. Maybe stress. Then. Maybe, maybe stress. Yeah, maybe, maybe now they say it. Yeah. Yeah, so that was first. You know, most people would argue that 2020 was a stressful year, but apparently oh. for Dorothy it was. <laughs> it was not. It stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I love staying at home and <laughs> having food delivered to me. <laughs> yes, we are very privileged, privileged yeah, too. For sure. I guess for me, um, I don't. I can't think of any. I might have, or maybe I've blocked it out because it was so traumatic. But I don't think I've had any major gastrointestinal issues. I think the best. Yeah, I mean, besides the mild lactose intolerance, now that I'm older, yeah, and then the um, like we talked about the period. When I'm on my period, oh, yes. the, uh, menses poops. Yeah, yeah, the menses yeah. poops are horrible. Just because it's a combination of abdominal cramps from my actual bleeding. Yeah, and yeah. then, yeah, I don't You're know. a bit confused sometimes. Like, yeah. is it stomach ache or is so it... I, oh, yes, I just... TMI, I just had my period. So I, I just went through the the few days of, oh uh-huh. my goodness. My I'm God. laughing because I'm awkward this way. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also can never even, relate. Even then my abdominal cramps and my everything is not that bad. Okay. And maybe thanks to my parents and good genes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I used to yeah, stop saying this. Yes, <laughs> <touch> <laughs> all the way. I 
mean, yeah, I guess more of stories just don't really take things for granted also. But anyway, like, yeah, speaking of don't take things for granted, like, don't take your youth for granted also. I was talking mm. to another colleague recently and we were talking about how after we became 25, <sighs> our, like, health just went downhill. Like, it Tell wasn't even it. a slope. It was just straight down. Yeah. Everything, all the problems started happening. <sighs> I don't want to think about my face. I was having like poop issues. Everything. <laughs> yeah, my everything face, went down here. My face starts getting wrinkles. You get back pain. Okay, it's so unrelated to poop. I'm like, how? Yeah, but it's oh, like, but how, it's all gut health it? though. It could just be because of the gut health and then all these things is, happen. Uh, I don't know. You remember how you said gut health is maybe the mm. cause for everything? Might be. Yeah, yeah. might uh, be. Listeners, let us know whether 25 was your steep drop-off point because I feel like that was my drop-off point. <laughs> There was no coming back. I mean, time always moves forward and there is no coming back. Unless we are fourth dimensional. I healthier (sighs) I guess. You feel healthier? Slightly. Oh yeah, because of your vegan diet, right? Yeah, oh yeah. So I'm kind of, okay, I'm not super strict about it, but I'm trying to be- You said weekdays. Yeah. yeah, vegan on weekdays, vegetarian on weekends. So huh? I was oh huh? I thought you were gonna oh, be like meat on week. <laughs> <laughs> still still mainly vegetable. Yeah, oh, so I'm mostly plant based. I just eat and drink milk and eat eggs on the weekends kind of thing. Um yeah. That oh yes. That, that made oh oh so I do have uh yeah. so on a more positive note. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Chow about it that day and then he was saying, he was asking me whether it even makes a difference, yeah. this whole diet thing. And I said, oh, actually my poops are better. Like, oh, that's <laughs> my good. poops have been good. The hot dogs all the time, gold standard. <laughs> I wouldn't say the hot dogs, but the, the time, you know? Remember what you were saying? Oh, the regular you know, time? The, the good poops are the, the short time ones. Yes, oh, yes, yes. right. One minute. Very was it? Effort. One minute. Yeah, yeah very, very little effort. I think... Yeah. So like clean. Oh, clean. okay. <laughs> Let's talk about marker butts later. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But yeah, I I never realized. So I mean, I hashtag bless. I've, I've had pretty good poops. I feel my whole that's life. That's great. That's but good. I feel like my poops are even better now. Uh, and and the only trigger is milk, obviously. But I still yeah. do drink milk occasionally, and my stomach gets a bit gassy, and then yeah, the poops Bloaty. are slightly worse. Yeah. But other than that, yeah. Oh. Yes, veggies. Veggies is everything. Is it worth it though? Mm. The milk, do you think? Yes, I like milk. I'm Milo. I was very stressed this week. If uh-huh. you realise I drank milk. <laughs> no, this as well. <laughs> I just need a co- I just need to, I needed to cope. Coping yeah, so it's milk. I did drink milk. I, as in, I don't drink fresh milk. I will drink milk tea. So yeah. it's not the worst. It's not just pure milk. Yeah. But then, yeah, the week that I totally abstain and just drink like oat milk if I really want to drink milk. Mm. Yeah, so good. No bloatedness and... Mm. Clean shits. Yeah. Uh. I love it when my sheets are clean. Yeah. yeah. Like, just eat more veggies. It feels so good. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to eat more vegetables. <laughs> just that that day I ordered from the Chinese store and there was no vegetables left. And I'm like, why? Today is the day from your store I eat all the vegetables. They just ran out of vegetables at the end of the day. Oh, oh right. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I'm constantly asking Dorothy to eat vegetables yes, since I, I've met I'm her. I'm trying to eat more. I, I she learned, has improved, yeah. I learned how to cook a vegetable dish that yeah. I think I can eat every day. Mm-hmm. Oh. Did That's I tell what? you about it? Kangkong? No, 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 no. Oh. It's like cabbage. So it, it, it essentially will taste tasteless. <laughs> 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 so you like, first you gr- fry some garlic and then you fry some chili padi. Okay. And then after that, you just throw in the, the cabbage, Chinese okay. cabbage, whatever, cab- warm, yeah. um, or whatever vegetable you like that will become like super soft. That is neutral tasting also. And I yes, must, I think you must, you must qualify. Neutral. Soft, tasteless. It's not, Rocket, or it's no. not okay, you yeah, know, okay, that true, kind true, of true, like true, the like, Chinese strong okay. tasting, yeah. yeah, 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 okay. And then you just add some soy, uh, oyster sauce mm-hmm. and then you just let it boil. The, so the water from the vegetables will all come out and then it form like a sauce along with its vitamins and <laughs> which I will drizzle over my rice. <laughs> and hopefully, it'll all come back to me. <laughs> but, I mean, eating the leaves at least, that's yeah, the fiber, it, oh, yes, 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 yeah, yes. So, I think I will try to cook that more. Yay, more veggie, more veggie is always good. Yes, mm. but I, I just Honestly. love it when, when there's no marker, but I don't know who, who else calls it marker, but do you What's call it It's like when you have a bad, you know, watery shit and you have stuff left on your butthole. Wait, who calls it that? <laughs> What's happening? My friend calls it that. I thought it's a very it good like term. You, it's like you mark your underwear. Like there's still marks poop. on your butt. So it's just called. <laughs> it's not clean. So, like, I'll just be like, 
or Wait. had a marker bad shit. Why don't you just wipe wipe it clean? I'm no, but those is the kind. Those are the kind where you have to wipe many many times and it's never ending. Oh, oh. Yeah, what? No, but I recently got a bidet. It's life changing. Oh, in school? How about in school? Oh, That's I don't, I don't poop in school. Some of them. Uh, sorry. Really? <laughs> never. <laughs> How can you control? Sometimes you just need to go. Try not to poop outside. Also, that's bad. That's bad. What is pooping your poop? All the time. I mean, like, now that we're back to normal uh-huh. shifts, how can you control not ever no, pooping no, no. So, here? So, like, my poops. Okay, so after the whole saga of there's a lot of issues. So then um, the few tips was also to regulate your poops mm. to, like, make sure you poop at a certain timing. Yeah. So now my body is trained to, like, poop in the morning before I leave and then poop at night <laughs> when just, I come back. When you say your body is trained, you sounded like a dog. <laughs> it is. Honestly, I, I was amazed by how trained it became after, like, just, I think, one week or two weeks. It was just, like, after that, in the morning, I would get the feeling. Oh, at night, okay. I would get the oh, feeling. Oh, yeah. Uh, huh? yeah, 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 yeah. It totally sounds like a dog. <laughs> 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 my gut has been trained to be like a dog it's like yeah. when you go home see the toilet oh it's poop time <laughs> morning wake up oh it's poop time then yeah. you <laughs> it's how? like you associate your poop with the picture of the toilet I don't know it's it's weird but like, how did you train it so I just made sure that I pooped at those times oh you forced yourself to poop at those not really forced so if like there was stuff then I would I would try to poop <laughs> and then if there was nothing then I don't sit on it for too long because you know you might get hemorrhoids yeah, yeah it's not that. good yeah, yeah, yeah so if your poops are painful could be hemorrhoids yes, you should yes, check yes. it out it's actually very very common and people a lot mm. of it goes undiagnosed yeah mm. so especially as you age mm. it becomes more common so even if it's something that didn't happen to you when you were younger yeah. doesn't mean that it's something to be shameful about or it's something to yeah. you know I think we can talk about hemorrhoids in another episode because mm, there's sure. quite oh. a lot of things to talk Shall about extend poop <laughs> uh, this is not really about poops anymore like it's it's still, still it's a, still bit poops. Poops. a bit about yeah, poops yeah I, I still there's, there's a very tenuous link between yeah. there is a link there is a link but it's more of the skin Marco oh butts. yes okay sorry I was Marco like butts. how do we get here Father I've never heard of Marco, ba- Marco butts oh yeah I haven't had those poops I guess Marco oh, that's it's great veganism as in, no, vegan. no 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 as in like not Reg- the the menses poops are disgusting, but oh. not but, marker butt. But they poops. are really marker butts. Yeah, the marker butts are like explain. the one where like you 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 poop out and and you feel like you can't squeeze it out anymore, but it's still there, and then you have to cut it off. Oh, you have to pinch it off. <laughs> that's why you have the marker butt also. <laughs> that was so descriptive. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like it is it happens to everyone. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah. Right. I, I hope yeah. so. <laughs> I think she she uh, described it so well. Happily, I'm yeah, very yeah, yeah. yes. yes. Yes, yes. Um, you, you immediately yeah. knew the feeling and yeah. knew what you had to yeah, do. Yeah, it's so uncomfortable. You cannot clear your system. Yeah, and it feels like it's still there, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's that, what tenesmus feels. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the clean shit is like, ooh. The best. So shook, man. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, so I guess the summary for this episode is don't be afraid to talk about your symptoms and you should be observing your poops yes, yes. and everything. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah. And I, I guess it's like don't be scared to talk to other people about it. Mm. Don't in, just Google I mean, it. Don't, don't just randomly go talk to someone like, <laughs> on the street. <laughs> but like, you know, strike up casual conversations because honestly, sometimes some things are just, you know, other people had gone through it as well yeah. and they might know exactly what you're going through. And so they can, I mean, although it's you know, non-medical professional advice but you, it can help you make a decision on whether or not you want to go visit or the opposite doctor. as well so if yeah. you're going if you went through something maybe someone else is going through it and they don't, don't want to bring it up yeah. so yeah. yeah it's fine to Makes talk about easier. your poops yeah it's I think a human we, thing yeah. yeah I think we in general like the three of us and our lab mates we yeah. are quite open about the poops, the poops. I was just like I'm good I mean, shit I, I, share, <laughs> I share pictures of what I oh my pictures of my colon after maybe got... that's over <laughs> I, I don't know but okay if, if it makes you healthier I'm, I'm all for it so <laughs> well, I mean, like, have you all seen a colon before I think that's I think it that's looks pretty exactly cool. like an endoscopy yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying it's the it's it's just looking inside just don't yeah. take a picture of your toilet bowl after you shit oh yeah oh, oh yeah, yeah. But, but much, maybe not much. that maybe not that because I mean some people might be eating you know <laughs> mm. which I'm actually totally fine if you talk about shit when I'm eating me too we I don't know why I'm weird we still talk about it we lunch. talk about the weirdest topics yeah. during lunch we can still talk about these kind of things and still eat I think eat. the people who can't are the weirder ones no offense <laughs> no but I think it's maybe science I don't know like we okay, just we're desensitized because of yeah we're a bit more detached to, to mm-hmm. the stuff yeah. yeah no I'm pretty sure we are the weird ones but okay <laughs> no but it shouldn't it shouldn't be weird it's, yeah. it's the point yes yeah. it shouldn't be weird anything it's, to add it's interesting 
Mm. To talk about shit. It is. <laughs> yes, that's why we like keep shit, on. shit, and shit in general. <laughs> <laughs> And as usual, follow us on Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. A like and a comment really helps us a lot. You can also follow us on our social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Feel free to DM us any questions. Alternatively, you can email us at thelabdoctors at gmail.com. Let us know if you like this kind of episode. And um, if you liked it, share it with your friends. Thank yep. you. Also, I realised that Amanda mentioned like if any of the listeners knew what a PP was, please DM us. Please don't DM oh. us what a PP is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you just said oh my episode. goodness. I just realised what okay. you're saying. Don't, I don't DM us your PP. I said, I meant it as the pigeon prince but Chao abbreviated as PP. So I, in the moment, said PP fully thinking of Pigeon Prince, okay? <laughs> Please don't send us a picture of your PV. Poop, man. <laughs>